In this down economy, we're all looking for ways to save money. So if you're a responsible car owner and you want to take care of your car, you can save money and give your machine the attention it deserves by changing your own oil. Every car needs an oil change, and it's something that can be done with a little mechanical know-how and only a handful of tools. Let's talk a little bit about safety. If you take your car to a shop, they'll put it on a lift and they'll work on it from underneath. You probably don't have a lift, otherwise you wouldn't be watching this video. You have a couple options though. You can always use a jack, but if you use a jack, you want to make sure you use jack stands. You don't want to be under the car and have it fall on top of you. What I've used here are ramps, but you can also drive it up on a curb. You just need enough room underneath for you to be able to get underneath it. You do want to make sure that it's secure, whatever you do. Today, there's three parts that we're concerned about. The top of the engine is going to be an oil filler cap, where you're going to put the oil in. The bottom is going to be an oil drain plug, where we're going to let the oil out. And somewhere in the middle is going to be an actual oil filter that we're going to replace. Let's talk a little about the stuff you're going to need. First thing you're going to need is oil. This is just regular Walmart oil. It comes in five quarts. My car needs about three and a half to four. So I bought a five because it's cheaper. Here's where it's going to say what kind it is. Mine's a five weight 20. Again, check your owner's manual for the specifics. You're also going to want an oil filter. Again, if you go to an AutoZone or a Walmart or any local car shop, they'll be able to help you find which one you need. It's going to look a little like this. It's going to screw on right there, and you're just going to want to hand tighten it. You're also going to need a way to get the oil drain plug off. I have a ratchet and a socket here. You can also use a wrench. Mine's a three quarter inch, but you're going to want to check your own before you buy one. You're also going to need a place for all that oil to go. I have a very lovely, well used oil drain pan. I'm going to put it under the plug. Oil's going to go in here, fill up the bottom, and I'll pour it out the sin. Once you're done with it, you're going to want to take it to an auto zone or someplace like that that recycles oil to get rid of it. You don't just want to throw it away or pour it down a drain. All right, this is the dirty part. You're going to want to find your oil drain plug, which is here on this car. You're going to take your wrench, make sure you have it set to lefty loosey. Break it loose. Now, first, it's going to be no big deal, but as soon as it comes out, hot oil, if the car's been running, or very cold oil, is going to come gushing out. That's where the mess happens. So you want to be care prepared for it. So I've got my oil drain here. I'm going to slowly undo this by hand. There we go. Just going to wipe it clean. You don't want to get any junk on this because it's going to go back in the engine. You're going to want to let the oil drain all the way out. Now for this part, you're going to want to be under the hood. at the very top of your engine is going to be your oil filler cap. In this case, it actually tells you what kind of oil you're going to be using, 5 weight 20. That's where you're going to pour in the new oil. Since we're still letting the old oil drain out, we're not going to put anything in for right now. Way down in here is the oil filter. It looks just like the one that we had in the box. So this one is attached to the engine. I put it on here, it should come off by hand. <sighs> of course, that might not always be the case. You may need to use an oil filter wrench to twist off the oil filter. There are literally dozens of different kinds of wrenches, and there's no wrong choice. Since my oil filter is in such a hard to get to place, I use this one because I can use ratchet extensions to get to my oil filter. The oil filter on your car is probably easier to get to than this one. It's always a good idea, however, to bring your new oil filter when you buy or borrow your wrench. That way you can test fit the filter and the wrench. You're probably thinking by now, holy crap, this looks really hard. I don't want to do this. Usually it's not this hard. 
This car is pretty hard to get to as far as oil filters go. I have rigged up a contraption here that should let us get it off. I see it's starting to move. This is where you start to get to use a little human ingenuity. Crap. In this case, I happen to have a few specialized tools because of my horror story. Help me get this off. Hopefully, you don't have a horror story, so you don't have some really, really crap, crazy way to get this all off. Something you'll want to keep in mind, there is oil in this oil filter that does spill. When you're doing this from the bottom, it's usually a lot easier to get your hands on. And it's usually easier to kind of keep your drain pan underneath it. So that's what a used one looks like. They usually don't take this much work to get on and off. And that one's pretty hard. So now that you've gotten the old one off, you can get the new one on. This is a lot easier. You're going to want to keep this clean inside because there's all sorts of filtery bits in there. What you're going to want to do is you're going to take a little of the old oil and just put it right here on this lip. This is going to lubricate it, help it seal better, and help it keep from sticking like that last one did. You don't want to get it inside, so you don't want to put dirty oil back in the engine. But on the seal, it should be fine. If you have the new oil all ready to go, then would be a good time. Now there's a little spigot in the middle of where this goes, twists on kind of like the lid to a Coke can, and you're going to twist it on there hand tight. Again, it doesn't have to be super tight, it's not going anywhere. Now you should have had enough time up top to let all the oil drain out. You're still oozing a little, but that's fine. Take your oil drain plug, get it back at the hole. I'm going to hand tighten it here at first. This is very important to get back in. Fortunately, it's usually pretty simple. Okay, if you have your dirty towel, like I do, I'll wipe off this excess oil. If it gets on the exhaust or anywhere hot, it's going to burn and it's going to produce white smoke. Probably bad for the environment. It's not bad for your car usually, but pretty good idea. Just kind of keep it clean. Once you're done with that, set back to right and tidy. Just make sure it's tight, it's not going anywhere. You don't want your oil to fall out. So, we've already taken the filler cap off. We're going to pour oil straight into the filler. Now, as I've already said, this engine takes about 3.7 quarts of oil. I have a little extra here. And these five quarts, they usually have markings on them. So there's about one quart in here. So I'm going to put this in here. I have another full one. And I'm going to put around here somewhere. We're going to check the dipstick as we go. And I'll show you how to do that. Now, if you have a funnel, this is usually a good time to use it. If you're really, really careful, though, or just stupid, you can pour it straight into the engine. It's usually not a problem. So now that we have oil in here, we're going to check the dipstick. Dipstick usually have a bright colored handle like this, pull straight out of the engine. You want to take the clean end of your dirty cloth, wipe it clean, stick it back inside the engine to get an accurate reading of the oil level. You'll see on this, there's marks along here to show how full it is. And this bottom line shows empty. The top line here shows full. So we're at about two-thirds in the safe zone. 
but we're pretty much done here. Stick it straight back in the engine. Carefully you don't get it dirty. Again, you want to keep your oil clean. Once you're done with your filter, take it out. Cover it up and you're done. You've changed your oil. You can buy the tools, the oil, and filter for about the price of an oil change at shop. After you have the tools, the next oil changes can cost less than $20. Expect to spend about an hour the first time you change your oil, about 20 to 30 minutes once you get used to it. Changing your own oil and doing other maintenance on the car will also create a connection between you and your machine. You'll be more in tune with the wear and tear of the car and will appreciate your vehicle more. And that's the point of this show to keep your car on the road and running smoothly.